Let's turn to an extraordinary story that has raised eyebrows just about everywhere where people have been reading about it because scientists in the US have identified the first ever case of a crocodile who made herself pregnant, uh, producing a fetus with a 99% DNA match to herself. The crocodile who laid the egg has been kept apart from other crocodiles its entire life. The phenomenon is uh, called a virgin birth. Uh, well, let's talk to uh, Warren Booth from Virginia Tech University, one of the researchers who worked on this study. Uh, thank you so much for being here on the program. Absolutely mind boggling this story. The obvious question, how? Uh, that's a great question. And we're still uh, working through the mechanisms that drive it, but we understand to the point that it's a, it's a process called automictic uh, terminal fusion, where the egg essentially fuses with a byproduct of egg formation. That makes it feel that it, that it became fertilized and, and it leads to the development. Uh, the big issue with it, however, is that that, that uh, offspring that is produced is not a clone of the mother. Uh, it's essentially a half clone uh, because it contains the set of chromosomes from the egg and they have fused with another set that are pretty much identical to it. Um, as a result, they're, they're very highly inbred and often they don't do very well. I'll come back to, to the egg and what you found in a moment or two, but uh, I read out that line that this crocodile had been kept separate from other crocodiles. You're absolutely 100% certain about that fact, are you? Well, even even if it had been with other males, um, we can tell from the DNA that, it, that, it, that no male was involved in the production of the offspring. So basically we, we sequenced the genome of the crocodile um, and we sequenced the genome of the parthenogen um, and we were not able to find any uh, evidence of a of a male contributing to that offspring. But and what we know about that animal is that it was um, housed in isolation for 18 years. And in terms of, of this happening, uh, I mean, w we said there in the introduction it was a first. Does, does this, does anything like this happen with any other species? It actually is pretty widespread. We're really in the last 10 years starting to realize how common it is among a certain group of organisms. So, for example, it's been found in, in a variety of shark species. Um, we, uh, in my research group and with collaborators, we've documented it across a whole group of, uh, of snakes, including boa constrictors and reticulated pythons and king cobra. Um, it also happens in, um, in a variety of lizard species and it happens in birds. And the interesting thing about this is that they all use the exact same mechanism of parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is actually quite a diverse um, set of mechanisms that can be used, and they're all using the exact same mechanism. So it suggests that that trait is actually something very ancestral, um, not something that has evolved in all of those different lineages. And what's really cool about that is, is where that then leads us to be able to make inference about other organisms that are now extinct. Well, because of well birds. A, a, as you say that, I, I'm reading here that scientists say that the trait may be inherited from an evolutionary ancestor. So dinosaurs might also have been capable of self-reproduction. That, that's where this takes you, does it? Well, it does, yeah, uh, because crocodiles and birds are part of this group of organisms called archosaurs. And in between the archosaurs, in between those two groups that, that bookend this, this, this lineage, we have the pterosaurs and the dinosaurs. So if uh, birds can do it and crocodiles can do it and they use the exact same mechanism and reptiles and lizards, which have evolved prior to the crocodiles also use that same mechanism, then it suggests pretty strongly that dinosaurs and pterosaurs also have the ability to produce parthenogenetically. Why has this gone unnoticed for, for decades? Why, why are we stumbling across this now for the first time? I think there's a couple of reasons. One is that we now have the ability to test these relatively easily. Sequencing DNA is not, um, is not a difficult process anymore. And we have the technology and we have the bioinformatic uh, software to be able to analyze the DNA uh, very effectively and very conclusively. And the other thing is that people are just becoming aware of it because there's been a number of studies published over the last 10 or 12 years that have really had relatively high profile. Our own work on boa constrictors and copperheads um, went worldwide a number of years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And since then, we've been inundated um, with uh, potential examples across a whole variety of different uh, reptile species. Um, and also last year, there was a paper published on King Co or in um, on California condors, and therefore another high profile species. So therefore, I think it's not going, it's been happening, but just people have not been aware of it.
Just 20 seconds, if you would. Uh, tell me, in terms of the egg that was produced here, tell me briefly about that. Uh, it was part of a, a, a small clutch of eggs that were laid. Uh, whenever they were excavated, um, because the female was acting aggressive around the nest, they find that seven of them appear to be fertile and they were incubated. And of those, one of them, when they opened it up, it never hatched, but it contained that stillborn uh, uh, American crocodile fetus. Warren Booth, uh, it is a sort of jaw-dropping story, uh, incredible, and, and so good to talk to you. So thanks for joining us uh, live here on the programme.